We're going to call the order at 5.02 this evening. If we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, everybody. We'll go up right on to item C, which is public comment. And a reminder, we offer both in-person and virtual public comment. Um, in-person does uh, have priority uh, for comment. Um, so we'll offer that first. If you're interested in providing comment and you are online with us, please raise your hand. Um, when we do open it up to virtual comment, then we'll make sure you can speak. Uh, and then just a reminder that we do require name and address prior to comments being delivered. Uh, so we will open it up to in-person comments. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hi, everyone knows me, but I'm Marcus Fairford, Pro County with Um I was very excited to see the reimbursement rate from the state. Um, it's great to get additional money. Uh, and I'm hopeful that the priority is to help offset the price escalation with inflation and if you introduce the building and the project that was presented to the voters and uh, approved overwhelmingly. Uh, we could ride one two one almost a year ago. Um, and then any benefit that could come from reducing the amount we have to bond would be, in my opinion, the bonus of that for of that So I think the priority is to build that project as we presented it. Um, and then whatever's left over is the like bonus for the rest of us to start tax that's it for in person. So we will open it up to virtual comment. Not seeing any hints. Okay. All, set. all right. Thank you very much. We will move on to item D, which is minutes. So that I have a motion to approve the attached May 11, 2022 minutes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are we good? Or I just want to make sure we're going to go on. Yeah, I'm not more upset. Okay. All right. And the motion carries. We'll move on to item E, which is correspondence received 510 to 523. We do have three pieces of correspondence included in our agenda item or agenda packet. So, of course, please, committee members, um, please take an opportunity to review those. Just a quick update on um, one of our, our items is uh, still outstanding for uh, response, which is um, E3. Um, so, in, and Pat's working on that just to make sure we respond to that that uh, question appropriately um, and uh, with the right and appropriate level of detail based on the response. So I just wanted to make sure that, that we passed that on. All right, so with that, oh, and I will also add in my obligatory reminder to make sure that you have the opportunity to communicate with us at any time using the contact form on our the home page website. So please. Advantage of that, as you can see, other community members are doing so, and we really appreciate that. It's a great opportunity for us to engage, answer questions, um, and, and really kind of make sure that we see and understand what questions are on the community as well. So it helps us with communication. So please take the opportunity to use that form. We will move right on to F, which is reports. Um, for F1 chair report, I'm actually going to uh, take the opportunity to pass this over to Chris Fagan really quickly. We have um, unfortunately left the 1928 building to be updated off our agenda for this this week only. We will make sure it gets added now that you are formally um, a, a, uh, you know moving forward. But Chris, if you want to give us a quick sure. update there. Yeah, thank you, Meg. Um, the 1928 building committee met today at three o'clock. Um, the meeting consisted solely of a uh, on-site tour of the building facility itself, from the, the basement and the heating units all the way to the roof. Um, our next meeting will be next Tuesday, the 31st at 4.30, which will have a more, I guess, wholesome agenda-driven meeting at that point in time. It was just a facility tour today. Excellent. Any questions or thoughts? I think it's going to be very helpful to have that, that updated these meetings. 
Uh, right. Uh, we'll go around to Cap Council ladies on the board. We have not met since the last meeting of this, so there's nothing to report other than our next meeting is it's, uh, June 7th. Thank you. Uh, board of Education meetings on the board, sir. There's nothing to report that will affect. Okay. And you guys will actually be not having a break into his meeting staff a little bit or something like that. So a few things. Uh, we had a couple of kickoff meetings last Friday morning with uh, Joe Versteeg, our uh, co-reviewer. So we came on board with Joe and his team, uh, as, well, as well as Richard Dawson with the uh, Structural Steel uh, Peer Review team. Uh, those uh, final, finalized contracts are going back to them uh, this evening. Kat, thank you very much for those documents today. Uh, the uh, working group met last week and we talked uh, about a lot of different items. One of them was the updated pre-construction schedule. You'll, you'll hear from uh, Mark Mullins. He'll give you a few updates uh, on uh, some of the things as we've been working that pre-construction schedule to make sure that we can uh, give TSAP enough time to complete the construction documents in, uh, as much as possible so that they're done done when we go to the state uh, for our PCR meeting uh, scheduled later in, in July. The, um, we'll hear from ONG as well on the ad services proposal for structural steel free detail that was presented in and reviewed by the working group as well. Um, we were also asked to put together a value engineering, value management uh, alternate list, uh, grand list. So it gives us sort of a historical data from when we started this project uh, till today and all of the items that have changed. The, um, we reviewed that, that list uh, at length. Uh, we included some of the potential alternates for consideration. Uh, and we had um, just one open item. Uh, that we show on that list. That list is attached to your, thank you, Devin's got it pulled up there. There's one open item, which is the motorized um, uh, partition at the, at the gym. So the working group will continue to, to review that item, but other than that, the, the rest of those items um, uh, have either been rejected or accepted. Uh, and then finally, we finally saw a presentation by TSKP of the interior renderings, reviewed those. Uh, those are also attached to your packet, and, uh, and we'll see those. Uh, and Richard today as well. My report. Oh, yeah, I, I have a quick question. I, and um, since I don't have the paperwork in front of me right now, it, did, did we land on, did we receive any drawings or any, any, um, Highlight as to where um, reduction in glass and what that would look like on both an, an interior and an exterior um, rendering or specification um, based upon some of the suggested BE um, adjustments. The ones that have already, the one that was already accepted, we did see the renderings last time. I brought yes. Yes. Yeah, they're included in your package. Yes. At the last meeting, we did present some samplings from our drawings showing uh, the alternates that showed before and after. So the, um, and, and we were proceeding with the afters. So the, I believe what I showed you was the ex extent of the exterior glass, some sample elevations, the extent of the interior glass, the reductions that were made, uh, the reductions in skylights, for example, and the alternative for the corridor walls, uh, ground face masonry versus uh, wall board with, with uh, wall cover. So I did illustrate that. Yes, those. Yes, it's actually trying to get jumped up after the last time. Yeah, so we did see the renderings last time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's part of the minutes from last year. Yeah. I think he's, I think like a dry and that's why. I don't know if he's on the way here. That makes sense, everybody, consistent with what we talked about last time. Okay. Thank you. Any other 
questions or nothing else from her? All right, we will move on to architect report. Great, thank you very much. Uh, yesterday at the end of the day, we submitted to ONG what we call the pricing set. Um, it's, the documents have grown quite a bit. Uh, and so I think we have four volumes of drawings where the last time we submitted to CAT and Wagon, we submitted three volumes of drawings plus specifications. Uh, those were submitted in PDF form uh, those can be available to the committee as well, but the purpose is to have ONG now do uh, a pricing review of the, this set of drawings. And so they should see in that set the alternates that we've identified, as well as the P items that we've identified. Uh, and we'll be working with ONG if there are any clarifications that are necessary. Uh, so we did that task. Uh, we do have some upcoming tasks. We're going to have a uh, Connecticut High Performance Schools kickoff meeting with consultants. Sam Kilpatrick should be there representing the district. The purpose of that is to fulfill the statutory requirements for projects that are above a certain dollar amount to meet Connecticut High Performance standards. Uh, a number of years ago, Connecticut initiated this standard to save energy, save conserve water. Uh, all of the issues that are identified in the LEED score sheet, for those of you who may be familiar with LEED, uh, LEED identifies certain items that are energy efficient and uh, water conserving, for example. So uh, rather than using the LEED score sheet, the state of Connecticut implemented its own score sheet, which is so. Uh, so we're going to have a kickoff meeting to make sure that all of the consultants have identified the items that are brought up in that score sheet. And the reason Sam needs to be there because there's a commitment on the part of the owner for maintenance going forward, such as um, air quality that is affected by the types of cleaning products that are used. For so that's going to happen uh, on June 2nd, and then we will have a follow-up meeting with PE and athletics to review the details of the gym. Um, so that those are the upcoming activities. Uh, we did include in the packet for the committee's benefit the illustrations that we prepared that show the interior of the building, various views of the interior. Uh, so I'm going to ask Devin to scroll through the plans as I describe them. Uh, you've seen this floor plan, plan before. It has been adjusted to reflect the current state of the design. You see those arrows that are there. You can see the red arrows that show the vantage points from which I'm going to show you the uh, illustrations. The first of which is the entry, that arrow near the entrance to the building, a view looking north uh, of the atrium space. And then I'll show you some uh, the music room, the cafeteria. There will be a couple of renderings. Uh, in the gymnasium, one red regular gymnasium. Next slide. On the second floor, there's an area there that's with, with some arrows that shows what we're calling the amphitheater. It's tiered seating, breakout space for activity and discussions, seminar, that kind of activity. And in the left upper corner, that's one of the art rooms. You'll see an illustration of that particular room. Next. Uh, there are no illustrations on the third floor, but some spaces are similar. Next. Uh, nothing's changed on the exterior except for the extent of the glass plus operable windows that have now been identified in the documents. Next. Uh, so this is the view, a uh, computer generated view of the interior of the atrium space. You can see that, uh, first of all, there's a, there should be a disclaimer at the bottom about uh, the, the colors and materials are subject to change. And the reason I say that is because remember, we have some um, alternates here. So things like ceiling, instead of the wood ceiling that you see there, it could be acoustic tile. The floor that we are illustrating here is a porcelain tile that could very easily be uh, a, little, a little linoleum tile instead. So there are minor changes there and we have, Ground face masonry shown on the walls, 
uh, but that can be easily uh, changed to ship with vinyl wall cover. Uh, this rendering was done before the decision for reducing the size of the skylight, but the reduction in the skylight is only about a foot. <coughs> so it's roughly from um, a six foot width to about five foot width. So it's not a significant change in the quality of light that you would see in the atrium. Um, next. So this is on the second floor. This is at the northern end of the building near the art classrooms. Uh, there's a stair that leads down one of the egress stairs, but we have this tiered seating that is configured so that you have breakout area, <coughs> discussions, that kind of activity. Uh, and it's again, it has daylight up above. The amount of glass has been reduced a little bit, but not significantly enough to change the character of this space. Uh, and then if you go up these tiered seating area, next slide. You'll see from a, a view from the other side, looking back at the atrium space, you can see the stair, one of the stairs that leads through the space. Uh, and on the left side, this is just outside the art area, so there's an opportunity to have art on display at the center of the atrium. Next slide. Uh, this is a view of the cafeteria. This is as you come in from the western entrance, the after hours entrance. Again, the colors and the materials such as the floor tile is subject to change. Uh, but we wanted to show you to scale a computer rendering, computer rendering to show you the character of the interior of the space. So um, this is a multifunction space, as you know. It's a space that has um, displays and cases that show artifacts, memorabilia that are important to the school. There's also a serving line or uh, servery just outside the kitchen at the far end of this room. And you can see you can see the second floor corridor at the end of this hallway, which is open to this uh, multi-purpose room, this cafeteria. So it's really a quite a dynamic interior space. Next. This is a view of the gymnasium. Uh, looking back at the bleachers. And then that wall that you see, that actually is a solid wall. It's not an operable wall. I know that's still subject to discussion by the committee, but that's the way it currently is in the design as a solid wall. We do have some glass so we can get some borrowed light from one space to the next. But that's the view. The view. Next. Uh, so this is a view of one of the art rooms that I showed you on the plan. Uh, showing the storage areas, the furniture, which again, furniture is going to be selected later, but this is just typical furniture that you might find in an art classroom. And before we did some value engineering, we were proposing to do these vertical acoustic blades on the ceiling that you see here. Those acoustic blades are done, they're different than any other rooms in the, in the school. We wanted to create a space that looked a little different because it's art room. So we wanted to expose some mechanical equipment up above. It just gives a more interesting ceiling. We really still would like to do this, but it was being beat out. Um, we can bring that up in the discussion with the executive committee. Next. Uh, this is um, a music room, and it shows the clouds that we are proposing for acoustic treatment in this room. Again, Colors and materials are subject to change, but that's acoustic material interspersed with uh, lighting. Uh, and we have acoustic treatment on that ceiling, on those clouds, plus we have acoustic treatment on the walls as well. Next. Uh, this is a view of the Black Box Theater. You can see it's Black Box. Um, and this is an area that is going to be changed as, as you create different kinds of program features in the room. So it has theatrical lighting. It has a grid above the space, as you can see. Uh, so you can change that lighting. But also, next slide, as you can see, you can use it also for other kinds of functions. You can easily just open it up and bring daylight into the space as well. There's tiered seating here. It's accessible, uh, and it's acoustically treated. Next. Uh, we have two shots of the auditorium. This one, this shot is near the stage. Uh, you can see we have 
a shallow sloped floor for some of the lower seating and then a much steeper sloped floor higher uh, on the back of the auditorium. And there's a cross aisle here and then we have we have proposed ceiling, uh, seating, upholstered seating, and we have proposed uh, finishes here, but these are subject to change. What we, we would like to do is uh, wood paneling, as you can see here. This is reflected in the documents that we gave to OMG for pricing. And then we also have painted walls up above that. The walls are articulated for acoustic reasons. Uh, we had our acoustic consultants, Jack Holden, participate of this space as well as the lighting. Uh, you can see that there are ceilings with LED lighting built in there. Again, color may be changed. There is one catwalk above the left ceiling panels. That catwalk is where you'll have theatrical lighting that uh, students can use to highlight features on the, on the stage. There's also side lighting on both sides, that vertical slot that you see on that wall. There's another one on the opposite wall, and that also, you, you'll have access to that from catwalks that are behind that wall, so you can do the adjustment uh, depending on performance. Next. Uh, this is the other vantage point. This is from higher up in the auditorium, looking down. Uh, shows you the configuration of the walls and uh, the treatment of the finishes. Probably carpet. That's what we're showing, except for certain areas that have, will have sealed concrete. Uh, any questions about the interiors? The rest is just a couple of exterior shots which you've seen before. I think you talked about that. What we're seeing in, in these rendering is before some of the B with the skylights or the exterior class. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So uh, the skylights, the change in skylights from like a, a six foot to five, it's not going to be a significant change to the amount or quality of light that you're going to be get. It will be a little bit dimmer, but you won't be able to tell. You have yeah, that shot of the interior main hallway. Yes, it's still glass that's along. So I, I, I could tell from rendering if that was the the. the instruction area a sort of middle room among the right is that a classroom so that no it's not a classroom right. so so that rendering actually was done before the DE yeah. a lot of that glass yeah that's what I, I was trying that's what I was trying to because I was looking through the, the, the slide deck that was sent to us earlier I was trying to figure out is this including or excluding so this is before we did some of that DE stuff that is correct okay and um refresh my memory too because I, I remember us talking about the light, the, the glass in the gym. I think that stayed correct, that it not get taken out through BE. That glass in the gym, that uh, clear story light, yeah. that still is in here. But that rendering is not correct because that glass faces north. So you're not going to get that direct light, okay. casting light on the gym. Yeah. So I remember that also came up because yeah. that light could have become distracting to all. Yeah, that. you won't have that. And there are also uh, the other part I could pick up from this rendering. Is there some are there are there um, what do you call them? Like, is this have like this kind of a, a treatment here? Is that what those circles of light are in the ceiling, or is that something else? No, actually, we have um, the steel trusses that span across the gymnasium, across the short dimension, and we have um, exposed metal perforated acoustic decking, which is uh, has acoustic treatment. So it's not just steel decking. It yeah. actually allows for some sound absorption. It's a material that we often use in industrial or gym kind of spaces where acoustic treatment is important. What are those round blue things that are on the left hand side? Of the on the left hand side, those are some skylights. Again, that was a neat item. That was so that, that is gone. Okay. That, that's what I was trying to figure out from these things. What what, what stage and what point? Thank you. Good catch. Richard, I just wanted to let you know, and I probably should have said this earlier, but um, Assistant Superintendent Kim Wynn went to an interior um, 
design showcase conference. And so there were like international speakers there and some really interesting topics like how flexible furniture um, and fluid spaces support student well being. So she went to lots of sessions and she has lots of readings and photos and went to a furniture uh, showcase. So she's really looking forward to, you know, working with, with all of you and potentially presenting to the building committee at some point, uh, some of the things that she learned about, but there were you know, people from all across the country, facility directors, educators, interior designers, architects. So it was a really exciting conference and, um, you know, hope that it will help to inform, you know, next step. Well, I, I appreciate that. And I, and I, I'm eager to see what she learned and hopefully she can share some of that with us as well as the committee. So uh, Susan Pinkney from my office, who will be doing spearheading the effort for furniture and color selection, those kinds of things will work closely with him. I'm sure Susan uh, would, would like to hear all of that stuff. Uh, I, I know for you shortly. Uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head because it was FFD and technology. Um, it was close to five million dollars. Five altogether. Right. Five altogether. All together. So somewhere in that three to three and a half weeks ago. Don't hold me on that. Right. That's right. We also sort of broke it out for Central like Central Office. It's a couple hundred miles. Yeah. yeah. We can get that number where it is. Yeah. yeah. Not so. Yeah. yeah. So it's part of the VE. Process. Yeah, of none of the is, owner you know, contingency, none of the FFD and technology okay. professional. Okay. Okay. I, I don't remember being on the VE blog, but I feel like that number buys us less, you know, than what we originally planned. So you're worried about classrooms with no dust. <laughs> 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 it's very sad. It's very sad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they'll do a workshop on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you're when you're out well, having the budget, right? Hopefully, we won't be the ones presenting. Right. <laughs> exactly. I hope so too. That's all I had to present. Any questions for Richard? Any more clarification or anything on that? These are these are very helpful as you see these to be able to yep. absorb everything else that's either in plan or other you know allocations that you've created. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Um, just kind of filling in for Laurel tonight that we're talking about the schedule, but uh, uh, I mean, the, the big picture here is that we're still on schedule. Uh, we did make some adjustments to our, our pre um kind of giving you know Richard's team a little bit more time to get the documents fully fully vetted and, and updated. Um, but we did uh, receive the pricing set, as Richard mentioned yesterday. So our team is starting to put that that estimate together. Um, again, it'll be the same process. We'll put the number together. It's kind of our team, um, bet those numbers, reconcile the numbers, and then present to the work group. Um, hopefully, at this time, we don't have to be on budget, but we may have to go through that same process and just kind of walk through. So, we'll wait for them. Um, again, right now that we're proceeding with our with our estimate, uh, we plan on going up to the state at the end of July, actually, July 26th, the state that we've got scheduled um, as, of, as of right now. And uh, we plan on bidding um, the second week of August. Excuse me, phase two work. With the anticipated construction start of October 24. So I think based on this whole kind of reworking the, the, uh, the PCR and going to the state a little bit later, getting the drawings completed, um, we, I think we lost probably about nine, 12 days, I think, on the overall schedule. But the end date of construction has not changed. So we're going to start a couple weeks later. We're going to make up that time uh, in our construction schedule, and uh, it'll be reflected in the schedule that we present to bidders as well, so they they buy into that that duration. So uh, overall, we're, we're in a very good very good place now with the, the schedule. And once we get the dates on the board, we should be in good shape. And the only other thing I have to report on, and as we'll talk about the detail and we'll what later in the presentation right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we did receive numbers on the enabling package, and um, our estimators now are going through and doing a retake off of the package that was actually bid on. So we prepared whatever scope was, was added from the phase two work and shipped to the phase one. We'll be able to explain that to the board. So, 
again, overall budget wise, we're, we're fine. We just wanted me to explain why the, the number was larger than what we had initially carried for that for that case. So it's all going to be encompassing, or it's encompassed in the overall site number. Um, but we want to break it out and show you why. So it's in that first name package. So it's going to be the balance of So we'll back have that in that next couple of years. Our next working group meeting. So this is a this is really scope definition is what we're looking at versus the, the pricing that we saw versus scope doing that with that comparison yes. to making sure we're all in the line that's there. Um, working group or the design group will run through that in detail, and then obviously it's going to come right back to this team to say let's let's relook, let's take a look at what those numbers look like, what the scope of work is, is it in alignment with what our expectations were, any other adjustments we need to make. Exactly. And the only real way to do that is to really take off the entire job again, and that's what our estimators are doing now. So, um, I'll that note a little bit sooner, but I don't have to take the time. Let's get some real information to look at. So, more to come from us from a committee perspective to take a look. So, this again, just to make sure everybody's level set, this is an early enabling bid. If you remember, we went out to Dan a little bit ago. We there was nine bids that came back. Yeah, great, great coverage. Which is, from what I understand, so. is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, great 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 so, um, so now let's we're just making sure everything's in alignment before we move forward on on that step. Right now. That makes sense, to everybody. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would see the So. July 11th. July 11th. July 11th. July 11th. Yeah. 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 So, first thing I bumped into somebody today, they're like, oh, we have an event at uh, Farmington High School. It's at the end of June, beginning of July. I'm like, where is the event? <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you parking? Where do you think you're parking? <laughs> it sounds like they're safe. Uh, I have a question to Mark, and that has to do with uh, we have the PCR date that, as you reported, now it's July 26th. So before we go to the state, we will be coming back to the building committee as well as the board of ed for sign offs. It's the same process that we went to through the phase one enabling package. We'll, we'll bring this set here or we'll set it by PDF or both so that you see what we're going to be bringing to the state. And then we'll be asking for sign offs by the building committee and by the board of ed. So that sign off date needs to be scheduled. I don't know if that's indicated yet. It, it is. I mean, we have a date in the schedule of July 15th. Okay. Uh, between actually July 15th and July 20th. Uh, so I, I know the board of ed may not meet in July, but this needs to be this needs your sign off. Most likely. <laughs> we'll look at everyone's schedule. I know we've had some thoughts about how we do that, make it convenient. Exactly. Okay. Could that be a hybrid? Just for those that are away to jump on for an hour. Just so we have yeah. sure, sure we got quorums because obviously make sure. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, like, like Congress does if you go around a couple votes before they you know. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> sure. Right. There's jobs for that. Yes, so there's some coordination there we need to do and make sure. And one of the things about full disclosure is potentially maybe having a joint meeting around that. I don't know what that will do. The scheduling, we're going to do everything we can to make what we have. But we also have to make sure that really it makes sense for them. So we'll try to come up with the best solution for everybody. But I think the high approach is going to be our best bet. Yep. Making sure that we get what we need. Sensible meeting. I mean, let's let's keep our fingers crossed that everything works the way we want to. But if there's more time, let's be able to go to reviewing some other reductions. We got that, I feel like we got that timing built in as a contingency. I think one, one of the takeaways we had from last time was to take a look at the remainder of the summer um, to try to make sure that we get. To you to out, back to out to everybody here and say, here's what we're thinking based on the schedule and looking at our these dates. Um, and again, our goal here this summer time is to have more meetings, but we also have to maintain the deadline. So I think that's something we still have on our list to do. Just 
line all those things up? Are they have the appropriate time? If not, we need to add them. The Zoom meetings and wherever we are, but other stuff. Yeah. Okay. Any special meeting should be held across the street. Always with, as you heard in statement, we were always looking for that end date to remain the same at all costs. So that's where we're, you know, that's where the art of it all comes in. Right? Right. Uh, and again, so, we're tracking, we're tracking very, very well, the original, even our original pre time schedule. So yeah. we might have missed a few days here and there, but we're all work. We need big so. Any other questions on schedule or anything? We're going to hear from Mark again a little bit in our discussion. May I just answer? Yeah, sure. So on the FFNE, we've got 4.9 uh, million school and about 200,000 for central office, so that that five million dollars split. Uh, and we do have one or contingency of six million uh, in the high school, about 260 for central office. Dollars have been I will say it's at that meeting with technology. Any other questions about the schedule? Okay. Any other questions? Communications met right before this meeting, and we are planning out the presentation for the June 2nd community meeting. That meeting will be taking place at 6 p.m. at the H room at the police department. Um, so we do encourage all committee members to attend. Um, we will be going over, it's basically an update based off of our newsletter. So a lot of those Q&As that we've been seeing a lot, stuff on the early enabling package, on the E, on uh, the reimbursement rate update. Um, we think it's a good comprehensive update to bring people up to speed since the last time we had a community meeting. And we also plan on showing the renderings that Richard just presented. Uh, so again, June second, six o'clock at the eight. And it's also on Zoom. Was in the newsletter, so everybody get their newsletter. That's good. Um, and so we're promoting it there. Devin sends some updates on the website as well. So anything we can do to promote um, people. We kept that baby in person attendance might be a little tough. That's fine. I agree. It's, it's fine too. We just like people there to listen and, and participate if they can. So I think we do promote that. I think it would be great. Um, in addition to that, we are also, uh, just as an FYI, the Rotary has asked uh, for a update as well. So on the 31st, um, we'll be providing a, a quick update to the Rotary, about a 20 minute presentation, probably very similar to what we will present on the second, just to give them an update on the timeline and, and that steps and where we are in the schedule. So you're going to start to see some of this community engagement ramp up as people, as we're talking about putting shovels in the ground, I think people are going to start to be really excited. So it's uh, it's good. It took us a while to get here and we're almost there, which is pretty exciting. Um, is there anything else? Communications, any other? The last meeting, we asked a question about putting schematics online. I know we had some yes, really high level questions. Yeah. And, and there was, I know it's probably not a priority at this very moment, but what can be put on from a public safety standpoint? Whether, you know, I know Richard had, had given some advice on what he had seen in the past. On, you know, obviously, nothing about alarms or security features, things like that. Right. Um, but how detailed we as a committee or the town want to really get um, with, you know, and that's exactly what we're kind of betting in the back end 
to respond to that correspondence okay. that, that requested that schematic design. Um, because to the extent we want to balance public safety at this point when the designs are getting more and more complete. Um, we will be adding those renderings that we presented today to the website, which does, again, very high level, but it has that um, floor plan, it has the internal. So that will be up immediately, and then we will work to see what, what we can provide. Um, it's again in the newsletter um, that we mentioned kind of that October time frame for groundbreaking. So uh, we've been talking about it for a while, but I think probably starting next month we'll be actually starting the conversations and we'll start to start to pull in today's stuff today. Um, so if you are interested in being part of that, a couple of people have already told me uh, that they're interested. So if you are, please, um, you know, get together myself, we'll make sure you're included on any advice moving forward on that. I know Mark, you said you guys are willing to help us and support us in that effort. Um, Ira as well will be part of those conversations. So we'll start that to get us prepped for, um, you know, probably mid to end of October is what we're, we're targeting. But the state has not been official. Believe it. We're even talking about it. I don't know. I mean, I do, every time it's a word come out of my mouth, I'm like, I can't believe it's it's right there. It's been a long time. All right. Any other questions or thoughts for communications? Um, I don't believe we have anything for professional partnership, right? That we need to report out and then financial report. Yeah. Um, so included in your packet is an updated financial report. Uh, we haven't seen this one in a while. Just to remind everybody, we have an account that we use pre-referendum. Some things come out of this account, like we did our CSG's contract, TSKP's contract, pre-referendum out of here. Once the referendum passed, everything's been coming out of that $135 million authorization. But we do have some updates to this. Ira, uh, Tall Timbers Marketing account comes out of here and there is an invoice that is on today's agenda for approval. So that has been updated. And then also the update is on postage that was sent out for the high school newsletter, which was just under $2,000 worth of postage. Um, so this account on hand has just over $91,000. A little bit of our different accounting, we have our invoices that we approve on one side, and then obviously we set my phone that we're turning against the side. All right, excellent. So why don't we move then right into new business? Um, so our very first order of business is um, G1. So can I get a motion to accept the cash invoice from Tom Cruise Marketing in the amount of $1,150? Second. Any discussion? It can seem it's been detailed what well, was included in the invoice for sure this is going to be better. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Access. And we'll go right into um, new business item G2. Uh, so, did I get a motion to accept the attached structural steel pre detailing proposal? Okay. All right, I'm going to open this up for discussion. You do have content inside your agenda packet. Um, I'm going to ask Mark actually, if you could just kind of walk through kind of the premise here. What's you know, sure. just some detail to get everything kind of up to speed on? Sure. So, I believe probably you're aware that we have a, a steel trained school, high school that's been constructed, uh, made up of you know, thousand tons of structural steel, something like that. Um, and part of the, the typical process, the way it's been done for for years and years, is that we would put, put the project out with the steel package, we get the number in, get a contract issued to that trade contractor, and then we would start the shop drawings. Um, that process usually would take three to four months before you would actually see steel on the job site. So the, the drawings are actually, every piece of steel member is actually drawn out individually. Computers and things are done a little bit quicker, but they build a model, they, 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 they draw out each piece, um, and then it's submitted to the architect and the, the engineer of record. They go through and review it. They mark up their comments on it. And typically, it would go back and forth between the architect and the engineer 
probably typically probably twice each each sheet would be reviewed probably at least once and then and then rechecked. The um and that really just took a lot of time. And then ultimately when you when you got into construction, um the detailers would have a lot of questions that would that would be asked. Um and it'd be elevations, the dimensional changes, there were questions, and um, it, it really just kind of draws out that entire shop drawing process, uh, which ultimately affects the delivery of still to the site and affects the overall schedule. Um, what we've been doing recently, um, and it's probably been over the last three or four years, is pre-detailing the project. So we actually hire a detail steel detailer to work directly with the structural engineer um, prior to the project going out to bid. They, they produce all the shop drawings, um, all the piece drawings, and um, we make that actually part of the bid package so that the steel contractors that are bidding the job pretty much have all the detail done already. Um, they have uh, their their uh, material laden sheets. They have all their shop drawings ready to go. So when they do their, their final takeoff, it, it's very accurate. It's not a lot, of, a lot of guessing. You're getting a lot tighter number of bid time. And once we actually start construction, those shop drawings kind of just go through the motion, meaning that the, the awarded contractor would take those drawings, maybe make a couple of minor changes to them, and then submit them for final review to the, the engineer record, um, who's already looked at these drawings and has worked with the detailer through that whole process. Um, it, it's a cost that is typically borne by the, the, the steel contractor, um, so it's part of his bid. What we're doing now is actually pulling that, that cost out of his, his bid amount, per se. And, and putting it in either our contractor, and a lot of times the architect will carry this into these feet as well for that for that work. Uh, but again, what we found is that it, one is expedited steel delivery to the site. And I think we had actually in our presentation early on, we had actually mentioned that because of the soil conditions, the good soil conditions we have up here, really have a pretty simple foundation plan. Right. Um, we're going to be needing steel up here in a very short period of time. So this is going to accelerate that that delivery steel to the site. Um, and then the other thing it does too is, is really it vets any issues with the, with the design of the building, any questions that come up um, with the detailing, with dimensions, elevations, those are all worked out with the detailer, the engineer, and, and, and Richard's team um, up front. So again, once we put this set of documents out, out to bid, you're really getting a much accurate, much more accurate number than you would if there was a lot of questions regarding the steel frame and, and dimensional questions and things like that. Um, again, it's, it's an expense that is truly bought, you know, whether we pre-detail it and, and buy it now or, or we buy it as part of the bid package, costs are really the same. Um, there's no, there's no difference between the two. We're just getting kind of jump on the project and, and getting that much further ahead in the, in the schedule. Um, what it also does, it'll, it'll flush out any issues with any material and, and steel shapes and sizes. So they'll know right away whether we're having problems with two steel, if that's a, a long lead item right now, or or hard joints. And it gives us the opportunity to make those adjustments in the front end, you know, in the, in the contract documents or the bid documents before we actually put it up on the street. So it's really a kind of a, a win-win. We don't we haven't had any issues. I've done this on a couple of other projects and it just really expedited the whole, the whole process. Um, where we actually had steel on site kind of waiting. For the, for the foundation to be completed to start erecting, um, erecting the building. So, um, we are you know, asking for additional services to have it run through our contract. Um, again, kind of Rich and I were going back and forth on whose contract it should fall under. Uh, and just again, to explain the process. I you put your one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, again, we, we think it's just, just a real benefit to the project. Um, it's a cost and expense that is part of the project to begin with. Um, whether we pay for it now or pay for it later, um, again, getting a jump on the overall uh, jump process. If I could piggyback on what Mark was saying, because I think for those of you who have not been through such a construction process, you may be wondering, wait a minute, we have to detail these steel connections all over again? Don't we have a structural engineer? You do. We have Michael Horton Associates, who is our consultant from New Haven. But what Fabrication shops need are actual fabrication drawings. These fabrication drawings detail every piece. And if components need to be pre drilled, because you're going to be passing pipe, sprinkler pipe, for instance, through a beam, they actually illustrate exactly where that 
drill hole needs to occur. And so the, the process of shot drawings for steel goes like this. Structural engineer does the details. He's, he's almost done. He's ready to coordinate with a shop drawing fabricator or fabrication drawings, but they haven't been hired yet. So, and the, you, you're not going to hire them typically until after you go out to bid, you hire a steel supplier who is actually going to do the shop drawings. Mark is right. It is an advantage in the schedule to be able to have all of those fabrication drawings done early. And no matter who you buy the steel from, they're going to use the same fabrication drawing. So that's the principle behind what Mark is saying. I did talk to our structural engineer about whether they've had experience working with ramp drafting. They have. They have no issues with ramp drafting if they were retained by LNG. And uh, our structural engineer said that you could start coordinating with your detailer in June, which which is a big leap forward rather than waiting until the GMP in October. It's a big difference. So um, just to add, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware that we have some additional detailed conversations at the design team level as well regarding this. And we did receive approval from all stakeholders in that meeting on this. That's why it's even in front of the, the whole committee tonight or else it probably wouldn't even be here if it was something that we didn't understand or didn't think was appropriate to have this conversation here. Uh, but you know, I just want to make sure people if they have questions about the process. I I have a lot uh, of questions about the process, but just because uh, in getting a good understanding of it, I think that was a great explanation, Mark and Richard, the two of you kind of um, breaking this down for us. But just anything else that everybody else wants to understand about this, um, you know, they're going to be asking us to approve um, the proposal that we have in front of us here. And it's, there is a price associated, but as we heard, it's a price that they should basically move from a budget perspective versus added. So I just want to make sure that we're everybody understands that as well. So I'm totally in support of advancing this. I guess the only clarifying question is might not maybe it's helpful for the public. We go through an RFP process when we are engaging in these consultants because either the architect or uh, contract <coughs> engaged them, we don't have to do that RFP. I wonder to what degree this is something that we deal with in the level of transparency about what we're doing and maybe not vote on it because where will it set up that line of what are we voting on? What are we not voting on? What is their responsibility to execute on the parts of their contract? We have to add this to their contract, though, because okay. currently because it's not in their contract. It's not in their contract. So it's yeah. not it's not as though we're we're approving this this group no. for this particular amount of money. What we're doing is we're saying it's an adjustment in their contract. It's an add service to their contract. We did, did this with TSCDP when we added was it kitchen design consultant? Correct. Yeah. A yeah. couple yeah. that that weren't in the scope of their contract. contract. So we approved to add it and they use their subcontractor. Right. So ordinarily, if you had all the time in the world, you would hire uh, you would you would bid the steel out right. and that steel back that steel supplier would hire RAM or someone equivalent to RAM to actually do the fabrication drawings. So now you're shifting it rather than the steel supplier to the CM. So now this is a complete technicality again, understanding I completely endorse this thing and I'll vote for whatever you want me to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> should we be voting on a motion that's adding to their contract or should we be voting to approve this proposal? And that's the yeah, part we can amend, we can amend It doesn't the matter matters. how we do it, I just don't want, yeah, let's be clear. I don't want to have anybody yeah, yeah. else come back and say, well, why aren't you voting on this, this, and this? Because we don't yeah. have to, and that's yeah. why. That's yes. the only reason why I'm just sort of trying to draw the distinction of what we're doing so we don't get Having somebody kind of go, what, what are you, why aren't you voting on all these things? Yeah. Yeah. So we could amend the motion to approve structural steel pre detailing to be added to OG's services. I like that. That makes sense. I think that's more clear. Yeah, yeah. that's a good catch. And we, when we do our, actually our first GM, with this enabling phase, we're going to put together a, we call it a mini GM. Yep. The small portion of the overall GMP. 
we'll include a line item for that pretty detail in that GDP. So we heard, you know, it's spelled out clearly in that actually actually what is the is the mechanism to actually adjust the contract. So um, it'll be it'll be very transparent. If, if you want to reduce 50 million from the other GMP, we can call that a mini GMP. <laughs> <laughs> however, you want to, however you want to posture that. So do you want me to withdraw my motion or do you want to have an amended motion? I I can likely withdraw my motion. If you withdraw my second. There you go. <laughs> and I'll, I'll raise it. I'll raise a motion to um to approve this the, the structural steel detailing as an addition to uh, the OG contract. Excellent. All right. Well, then that for discussion. <laughs> Everybody good though with the change. I think that was good cut. Just because I don't like something you say yeah. when you both hear not vote with your arm. Yeah. But any other questions too about the process and you know kind of anything else that's explained to explain the chair please. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. <laughs> and the same. And with that, we have to the end of our uh, So, could I have a motion to adjourn, please? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. We are going to adjourn at 5 <laughs>